touched on a minute ago that you spent some time at the Helmer Majesty service in prison. Yep. Do you mind me asking what led you there, Aston? It's a mad time in my life. Serious mental health problems, drug addiction, and then committing some serious crimes, mate. And the main man was a serious assault, permanent disfigurement, you know what I mean? Um, and there was a few other charges on there, which led me to just getting shy of two years, you know what I mean, in prison, which I was very, very lucky to only get because I was thinking it's a five year stretch or remitted to the high court, it's got to be. Um, so I mean, it was just a, a hard, a bad time in my life, you know what I mean? And I'd done some things, which a lot of people say, it's sort of character for me, you know what I mean? But people didn't know then what was going on in here, you know what I mean? I was sectioned as well in Leverndale after I committed the crimes. The crimes, all this only caught up to me years after they got done. It happened in 2017 and they go to jail till 2019. A couple of years, so you're trying to get your life back. I fought in between that, you know what I mean? So my life was getting back to a good place, but I still had this thing in my head and I knew that I've got to go to jail for this, you know what I mean? How difficult was that time for you? Aye, it was a hard time, mate. Um, it was a very, very difficult time because I knew I didn't make aware like I'd done it and I got better. I knew it was going to come back and get me. Of course it was. I was basically on the run, mate, you know what I mean? I was jumping out my window, dodging the post, cutting my door every single day, man, you know what I mean? Sliding the boat and flat out the window, boom, running my old man's. You come out my old man's, I'd be away, he'd phone me, do it at the door again. You know what I mean? So you're just moving about sneakily. It wasn't good, you know what I mean? It was not good. Do you feel like a bit of maturity and self discipline back then? Aye, definitely, mate. Definitely. Um, it's like life lessons, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's like learning every single day. I was a fucking nutcase, mate. I was. Especially on drinking drugs. Um, I was a nutcase, mate. People might turn around and say you're a bit of a nutcase with foot on, mate, but it might be in a, a, in a good way, in a, you know what I mean, in, in boxing, whatever it is. But when I was with for drinking drugs, mate, I was after school, you know what I mean? I was a dangerous person. I was a danger to the fucking streets, you know what I mean? What turned you to drinking drugs? Was it the fact that you'd had that bad injury at the time through your pro career? Was that basically a, a road so, that led you down to drinking drugs? It, um, I always say to people, like, obviously boxing is the biggest high in it in the world, so when you're training every single day, you're fighting, man, your adrenaline's through the roof, and obviously I broke my hand. And um, for some mad reason, mate, I fucking tried cocaine, you know what I mean? And it gave me, and this is at the beginning, it gave me that got up and go and day things and blank this out and blood this out and blood every day, life problems out. Because when you break your hand, it's like you're no boxing, you're no training, and it's like a downer in it. And it gave me that. When you progress to taking it every single day or every second day and you're hiding it for everybody and that, it becomes an addiction and a problem, mate. And you become a liar, a thief, dishonest, you know what I mean? Um, so. Getting a lot of financial trouble with the cocaine and things like that? Or? <laughs> it wasn't really financial trouble, mate, you know what I mean? It was more just. It was more just an addiction for me, you know what I mean? It's like that, all, the, all that stuff does come, mate, for certain people. No, massively for me. Of course, I owed people money in that and again, of course, that's the way it is, but it wasn't a massive thing. It wasn't like, oh, I'm in millions of pounds off of debt. It was just mere like, I want it and I want it now, and people start avoiding you, you know what I mean? And I was surrounding myself with the wrong people on the basis of like drug dealers and people I know, you know what I mean? These are the, I'm not saying these are bad people, man, but I shouldn't be surrounding myself with the people. I'm a professional athlete, that's the way people look at me. Uh, but once you're in that, when you, once you're an addict, you don't see like that. Yeah. You're just self. I want and I get, you know what I mean? And they, they, it doesn't matter about anybody else, about me. How much did your life spiral out of control that time? I'm lucky to be alive, others, right? mate. You know what I mean? I had two attempts on my own life, you know what I mean? I'm lucky to be alive with you, and I'm thankful to be alive. Um, again, I was sectioned, you know what I mean? And I was in Levendale, and they'd done, they done amazing things for me. But the only thing they did in the day for me was show me how to stay away from you. drugs. Um, they get you off them, but you go to the door. But they have a work of fellowship and a work of program, which tells me, puts me in the right place and, and, and gives me the tools of the day to stay away from all these things and do the correct things. That program been a huge benefit to you? It saved my life, mate. If I didn't have that fellowship and that program, 
you're going to be sitting here today, mate. That's the way I look at it. If I don't have that in my life, I don't have my life. Are you thankful, yes, for that? It's... It's an anonymous programme, mate. It's called CA, but see the people in my fellowship and all that? This is people I've only met in a small amount of time. They're like family to me, mate. They're like family to me. When I meet these people, we don't shake hands, we hug. The energy these people give me every single day in the lift. And you're, I'm sitting, I'm talking with people who have been drug addicts for 25 years but are clean and sober now. Wow, if you told me five years ago I'd be sitting talking to these sort of people and they would give me energy and a lift in life and, and positivity, I would say you're off your head. You know what I mean? You seem a lot mentally stronger now. You've been on the brink of death as you just touched yep. on. How important is that for you to have that mental strength in your life now? Massive. You know what I mean? I'm a... I'm a sort of guy who can, if I want it, I'll get, I will get it. And not in a selfish way, I just mean if I want to achieve something, I'll not go down, I'll work hard and I'll do it, you know what I mean? And I'm not going to turn and say, oh, need to step in my way or go in my way to do it, because that's, that's the ego itself in it. I just mean the right things in life. I want it, I'm going to do it. And again, as we're talking about, I want to be the best boxer I can be, and that's what I'm going to do, you know what I mean? See, if you have time in prison, what have you learned from that experience? I'm not untouchable, mate, and I'm not invincible. Because for all the years I ran about thinking I was, I'd never been sentenced, I'd never been to jail, and got to prison and sitting for almost a year, doing nothing, you know what I mean? And I was in there for seven months on a lockdown as well, you know what I mean? No visits, family, friends, not even getting Zoom calls, nor that. Zoom calls are cutting out, stuff like that. That's mentally tough, you know what I mean? Prison made me mentally strong in, in ways I can't describe, but it did, you know what I mean? And made me Appreciate the life I've got today, which is a good life. How was your time inside? It was good, mate. I met some cracking people in there. And people go, what, you mad? Fucking jail or not? Oh, junkies for this. It's no. I mean, it's no. It doesn't even matter if you're talking to a drug addict or not. It's normal people, mate. You know what I mean? And I met some cracking guys out there um, that I'll never forget. Some guys are never going to go out there now. You know what I mean? Um, I learned a lot, mate. I learned a lot. I learned a lot now. They say with age comes wisdom. Yes. Do you feel you're a lot wiser now that you won't get back to those dark days that you were back then? Aye. I've got the tools. I've got, I've got, I've got the tools the day to deal with life, mate. We all need tools in life to deal with certain situations in life and certain things that come our way. And before I didn't have them, mate, my, the tools were, you know, just get something to blur that out and blank that out, i.e. addiction or drugs or madness. I don't, I've not got that today. I'm at peace. If anything comes my way, I've got the tools to deal with it. You know what I mean? Any situations, it could be good or bad, I've got the tools to deal with it. And for me, that's enough peace, mate. I'm at peace now. You know what I mean? You've been to a very, very tough place. Mm -hmm. What got you through that difficult time? Even when you were sitting in that prison cell, what got you through that time? My family, mate, all right? And the thing is, it's like... I, I, people go, how, how can you speak? I've got a wee girl who's eight now, and I'm not seen her for over three years, mate. Every single day when I'm sitting in there, mate, I'm, how can I go back? How can I go back to the other days? How can, I need to get her. I can't do that. I can't go back to that. So, if that doesn't change you, well, mate, you know what I mean? Family, my wee girl, mate. You Monroe, my, her name's not Monroe. I'm my head every single day going, we're going to be back together soon, darling. Just be patient. And I wasn't a patient guy, mate. If I wanted that, I wanted it now. But I've learned to be patient in life, you know what I mean? I got granted access to her seven weeks ago in court and I've still had no word on contact yet. Before, I didn't put the contact centre causing mayhem. But I'm patient today, mate. I'm patient. I'm going, no, everything. It's a process for everything, you know what I mean? Everything, the right steps will be taken and me and her will be back together soon. You feel more disciplined now? 100%, mate. I've never been. The discipline is I like, and I need to be. I need to be, mate. I need to be disciplined. Today, for all this to happen and for boxing to happen, especially, you know what I mean? Well, just looking at it, right? At the gym you're training, okay? Mm -hmm. You're on the comeback, you're giving a second chance. That, there's no many people that can come back to that. They go to jail, they go down the slippery road. Mm -hmm. That shows resilience and belief. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? 100%, mate. 100%, mate. I believe, going through all the mad times, even I believe deep inside me, man, I was like, ah, no, I'll get through this and I'll get back. And people say to me, oh, you're back to where the old you, you know. And I always say to them, no, 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 no. It's not the old me. I said, I'm a million times better. How come? 
because it's not about this external stuff and what you see, it's about in here. Because that old me that you've seen was doing great, man, you didn't know what was going on here, so I'm telling you this is a million times better. Aston Brown, you're getting right now. And um, people appreciate that, you know what I mean? And I appreciate it.